Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Madeep and in today's video, we are going to discuss about Neobase classifier. So in previous video, we discussed this conceptual implementation, conceptual part on whiteboard, how it actually works behind the scene. And in today's video, we are going to do the Python implementation. So let's get started without wasting any further time. So um, the data that we are going to use today is let me take you walk through of that data. So basically, this is the data set that we are going to use. This data set is of uh, from some social media platform. And you can think of that. Uh, uh, given this data, this data tells you about that a particular user will purchase something uh, from the ad which is given on the social media profile of that user. So he is going to purchase something uh, why that add or not. So this uh, data tells about uh, this information. User ID column is a unique identifier for a user. Gender tells you the gender of the user. Uh, age tells you the age. This is uh, estimated salary. This tells you the salary of that user. And purchased, and this is the, uh, this column tells you that whether particular user has purchased uh, via social media ad or not. So if you think of this first row, um, this, use, this user is a male and his age is 19. His estimated salary is 19,000 and he, did not, he didn't purchase uh, via that ad. Uh, and the same way, if you take a look at this uh, row, you can understand that this user is a female, age is 32. This uh, 150,000 uh, is her salary and she purchased uh, via that ad. So this is the uh, data which tells you uh, the purchase behavior of a user or not, uh, purchase behavior of a user. So this is going to be our target variable. We are going to train our, our model using this data and we are going to predict whether a particular user will buy or not or will purchase or not using uh, that social media ad. So now let's move on to the coding part. And uh, to move on to the coding part, uh, let's get started. OK, so very first thing I'm going to do first thing first, I'm just importing my uh, uh, basic libraries, pandas and numpy. So import pandas as pd and import numpy as np. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to read my CSV, uh, which I just shown to you. It, so to read that, there is a method to re read CSV. And I'm going to read this into a DF object, which is my which represents my data frame. Now, if you take a look at the first five rows of this uh, data frame using head method, you can see that these are this is my this is how my data look like. User ID column tells you the user ID. And if you take a deep look at it, uh, this user ID column is not for that much use for us. Reason being, this is just a unique identifier to uh, identify a particular user on the social media platform. Uh, it has no valuable information which we should give to our model while training or testing. So uh, we are going to drop this. Uh, the next column is our gender column, which is uh, which contains uh, two type of values, male and female. So basically, uh, you can see that this contains values in string. So this is a categorical column and we need to convert into numerical column because we cannot give direct it to our model. Our model will not understand it. So we are going to did uh, feature engineering of this column. We will convert it into numerical column. And is is uh, is seems to be fine for us. Estimated salary fine for us because those are numerical column numerical values. And the next is purchased. Purchased is our target variable, and this is uh, again uh, in numerical column. 
the next thing uh, i am going to do is i am going to check that uh, is there uh, is there any null value or not in my data frame so to do that part what i am going to do is i am going to use df dot is null dot any it will tell me is there any null value so you can see that for each of the column it is saying false 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 so there is no null value so don't no missing value so we are good at that point the next thing after checking the uh, missing values uh, the next thing uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a, a dummies for my this gender i'm going to convert into into uh, numerical column and to do that i'm going to use pd dot get dummies method i'm passing the column which i want to convert draw first true is let me make it first false then i will tell you uh, what is the effect of uh, false and true on the on the result so now if i run it so what this function has done this function or this method has done uh it has take uh, it has taken this gender column which is this one and what it has done it has created as many column as many type of values this gender column have so now you can see that my gender column have two type of value so it has created two new columns and these two new column represent the same information which was represented earlier by gender column so you can read this as uh where male is 1 it is uh, female is 0 and uh, see you can see that my first record was of male my second record also is of male that means for male it will make mark as 1 and for female it will mark as 0 so it has done nothing great or nothing i mean something rocket science is there it's just simple it just converted that into numerical values now if i make it true Draw, draw first is equal to true. What it will do? It will drop the female column, and it will only keep the male column. And um, the reason behind this is that uh, the reason behind this is that uh, we can represent this information using one column as well. How we can do that? So whenever male is one, we can read it as a male. and whenever male is zero we can read it as a female so that's how uh, we can uh, restrict ourselves uh, not to have extra column which represent the same information so that's the idea behind it so let me do it now you can see that we have only one column male and wherever male is equal to 1 that means that uh, that is male and wherever male is zero we can think of it as female so after doing this uh, after doing this the next thing what we can do is as i discussed with you just earlier couple of minutes ago user id is of no use for us we are going to drop this so to drop this column what we are going to do df dot drop we are passing the column axis is 1 that means we want to do this operation column wise we want to drop this column in place true means that we do not want a new copy of data frame we are going to update the same copy of data frame which is df so now if you take a look at df you will be able to see that now my user id has been dropped now next thing is since uh, we have converted our gender column into this new column male so we do not need this column as well as this is a categorical uh variable or cat it has values in string so what we are going to do we are going to drop this as well so to do this we are going to again use df dot drop and so df dot drop column name axis column axis is equal to 1 that means column wise in place true means i want to modify the same data frame i do not need want to create a new data frame so uh, if you now take a look at uh, now my gender column is also dropped now i only have three columns the next thing i am going to do is i am going to append this data frame gender data frame with my this data frame so to do that uh, we have a method of pd dot concat in our uh, pandas library so what we can do is we can 
use this method pd.concat and uh, I'm just passing df. This is my data frame. So basically, I'm kind of concatting one data frame is this one and another data frame is this one. I'm just concatenating this. So x is one is I'm doing this operation column wise. Now, if you take a look, you will be able to find that mail has been uh, concatenated with my df object or my data frame. This is now our data is ready. Now, next thing what we can do is we can create our x and y. Our X is our feature matrix, uh, the features, the independent feature, which we are going to give to our model and purchased is our target variable, which we are going to uh, predict. So purchased is our Y and rest three column are our X. So I'm going to create my X and Y to do that. Uh, how I am going to do that is I'm going to use my uh, df.ilog there is a method df.ilog so i will take you through df.ilog and the values before this column this represents uh, since there is no value has been passed uh, it means that i am taking all of the rows assume that if it has been passed like something like this one to nine so what it would have done it would have picked the first nine rows of these columns uh, columns which are at zero one and third index so, but we need all of the rows so that's why there is no value passed and here it is representing that which column we want so i am passing zero one and three zero one three means zero is my age one is my salary and three is my ma uh, this male column so these are going to constitute my uh, x variable and the same way uh, if you take a look at it, this is my age, this is my salary and this is my uh, gender or you can say that male or uh, male or not male that means female. The same way I am going to create my y variable using df.ilog. So my df.ilog is uh, I am passing the same way here. I am passing here as minus two that means I am taking the second column from the last. Second column from the last is you can see that this is my first column from last and this is my second column from last. That means so this this line means that I am taking all of the rows and only the second column from the last and putting all those value into Y. So this is how my Y looks like 0101 which represents purchased or not purchased. Now, the next thing uh, after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my uh, train test split. I'm going to uh, do it using models from sklearn.model selection, import the train test split class, create an object of it. While creating an, uh, an object, we pass X and Y. We give the test size, how much we want to keep for the testing purpose. Random state is a, a numerical value. You can give anything. I have just passed a zero. And it will create for me X train and X test and Y train and Y test. After doing that, one thing uh, I just missed and it came to my mind right now is that uh, if you take a look at this data, you can think of that we are having uh, so not this data. Uh, let me show it to you. Uh, so let me show X train to you. So here we have three columns. Uh, this is age, this is salary, this is male or female. So you can imagine that we have some mathematical equation and in, in that mathematical equation, we have three variables x, y and z and these three variables have values on different range. So this variable is having values only on 0 and 1. This uh, first age variable is having values, let's say from one to hundred, but salary is in thousands. So you can think of that. There are three variables in an equation. One is ranging from zero to one. Another is ranging from one to hundred and third is ranging from um, a third is ranging in thousands. So what will happen is that this, the variable which have values in thousand, it can have more significant impact while doing the calculation. So uh, what it will lead to is uh, it will give more importance to this variable only. So it may have more impact on this. So uh, to avoid such situation, uh, 
we before training uh, what we do we do the scaling in scaling what we do we bring down all the variables on the same scale so let's say um, it is something like you you can think of that uh, there are uh, distances uh, given in three uh, let's say uh, you want to go from uh, delhi to jaipur and distance is given in let's say centimeters meter and kilometer uh, so that may create confusion so uh, we what we do we do the scaling and we bring down all those values on the same scale so to do that there is already a provision for this we have a standard scaler and different scalers available in our python libraries so here i am using my standard scaler only so i am doing uh, creating an object of standard scaler i am doing fit transform for xlane and transform for my x test now after this if you take a look at my new xlane you will be able to see that all those values are got uh, transformed on the same scale so now these values are in uh, in uh, on the same scale so these values while doing mathematical calculation these will have similar effect uh while doing the mathematical calculation and if it it will not make our model biased so towards one variable now uh we have done our train test split we have done our scaling now it's the, it is the time for our model creation and uh, training our model so to do that part what we are going to do is we are going to create an object of uh, from sql and dot navbase i am importing gaussian navbase and b and creating an object of it and i am passing x train and y train and i am training my model using fit method after training my model i am going to uh, predict the test results so to predict the test result uh, we have a method predict so classifier dot predict i am passing my x test and this is it is returning those value in y pred now next i want to check uh, what is the uh, accuracy score of like how my model is performing so for that we have this accuracy score and uh, we pass y test and y pred y test is the actual values y pred is the values predicted by our model so you can think of that two columns one column has uh, the actual truth values and one column have values uh, which are predicted by our model so and it just compares that wherever uh, like at a how many times these values match so after that it creates uh, calculate the accuracy so you can see here it is 0.92 that means uh, accuracy of 92% and the last thing that i just want to show it to you is that if you want to take a look where my model is doing uh, the correct prediction and where my model is not doing the uh, correct prediction so for that we have this confusion matrix and this is also in my sql and library so what we are going to do we are just similar to accuracy score we just pass y test and y predict to the confusion matrix while creating an object and it will create me the confusion matrix and if you take a look at this you will be able to see some values in numeric and this is not representing a very good way to represent the information so to uh, represent the same information on a heat map i will tell you what this um, information tells us so to do that i am just using matplot library and cbon library i am uh, creating a figure of size 7 by 7 annotate true means uh, i will tell you just after this and cm is the the same matrix which is this one i am passing to it and it is saying that create a heat map of this cm and annotate true and on the x label i am making predicted variable and on the y is my truth so if you take a look at this now if i uh, this is annotate true means the values which you are able to see uh, inside this box rectangular box let's say 56 2 4 18 if i make it false these values will not represent will not come here so if you see that see the values are not uh, annotated so that's why we need this uh, because we need to read what this uh, colorful picture is telling us so you can think that 
this is uh, my y axis represents the uh, truth my x axis represents the prediction so you can read this matrix as when my uh, truth was zero and my prediction was also zero that means 56 time it has corrected uh, predicted correctly that means my uh, actual value was also zero and my predicted value was also zero zero means that user has not purchased via that ad so 56 time so or the another uh, another thing that you can learn is the values which are represented on the diagonal they are the uh, they are the correct predictions rest all are not correct so you can think of that see for this one uh, 56 time it was zero and predicted was also zero that means 56 time user didn't buy and we also predicted that user didn't buy and uh, 18 time uh, we predicted it as one and it was uh, also actually one that means 18 time user uh, purchased from that ad and we also our model also predicted that uh, uh, that user has predict uh, sorry purchased and uh, to read the black boxes you can think of that truth is one that means actually user bought but we predicted user didn't buy and the same way for this two you can think of truth was zero user actually didn't buy but our model told us that that user has bought so this is how we can read our confusion matrix and this is all about gaussian naive bayes classifier and that's all for today's video and thanks for watching this and i would request you if you like my videos uh, please subscribe my channel leave a comment if you want something specific to be covered for machine learning data science field i am working on the machine learning playlist and till then bye bye take care see you thank you